What's up, folks? I know you only got my head here, but that's okay. Um, so really quickly, well, I always say really quickly, but I'm gonna make this quick for sure. So all I'm trying to do is invoke a little bit of thought. I'm just trying to get you guys to think a little bit. So what I want to look at today is I just start looking at TQQQ and as I go through some technical analysis and like really, I know a lot of people do technical analysis and they're looking at patterns and they're looking at uh, repetitive patterns and, and that kind of thing. And they're trying to commit certain things to memory. And that's fine. Um, but the way I analyze stuff is on a whole nother level, right? So, I mean, I'll sit there and stare at something for minutes, hours, whatever, until I can figure something out. But anyway, uh, sometimes I can't figure anything out. Sometimes things don't make sense. Sometimes there's small movements that uh, they're actually taking place and there's nothing discernible there. But um, as I'm sitting here looking over TQQQ and of course, you know, I've got multiple screens open, so I'll make it difficult for you by going from screen to screen. Um, I just wanted to, again, I'm just trying to invoke some thought. I, you know, I don't have the answer. I'm not sure many people have the full answer, but if, again, you know, it's, it's, it's the adage about, about the horse and, uh, and water, right? So, you know, if somebody can tell you where to enter, fine. But I'm just trying to invoke some thoughts so you can figure out where to enter for yourself. Anyway, so one of the things I've noticed, I wish I could make this a little bit easier on switching so I wouldn't have to move this back and forth. Um, but it, it'll work for now. Okay, all right, so on TQQQ, I might have to do it another way. This is gonna be we're gonna go back and forth a lot. All right, so on TQQQ, there is there's a couple of areas I was looking at, and I'm I'm really trying to identify like these uh, the the better or the bigger movers, right? So, and I know this isn't a big move here. This is a little bit of a reversal, and then it drops down. That's fine. I'm just trying to see how I can identify this range here as opposed to this range, because this range here was um, was just another. Um, part of the continuation of the downward wave, right? Um, and same with, where was I at? Um, I think same with this, right? So here you have a lower low, and then here you have the lowest low before it moves up. So how can we identify this instead of this? Because if we get in here, we're in trouble. And we might've got in here because we tried to enter in a zone created by the open of that day, right? Um, or we, I'm, I'm just trying to, you know, play devil's advocate, right? So, or if we looked at this as being a potential zone, right? We might have entered there. And again, that does serve as some temporary support, but that's not the best level of support. So, what is this zone referencing? This zone is referencing, I guess, this time point this um the beginning of the gap right so before we had the gap up here this is the last part of that day so this is where um bulls uh, I, I won't say where they stopped but that's where the market bulls stopped for the day um yeah okay all right so i'm just going to get those out of there for a little bit of clarity but what i want to do and if you know um I think think or swim it automatically like the cursor on the screen automatically moves from one chart to the next so if i if i bring this up you see how my cursor is moving on the screen i'm pretty sure of think or swim it moves on all the screens just the same whereas i have to go down here and i have to move it separately i have to go up here and i have to move it separately same thing if i'm here it won't move on the other charts so i have to use the global positioning which is the t there uh, and then once I tap on the on an area, then it global positions me to that same area on the other charts. So it did it here, right? You see that line there? Did it here and it did it here. All right, so, and these are the areas that were identified. Now this is the one minute time frame here. This is a five second time frame. I'm breaking it down to, um, to smaller fractions right of the of the screen because that's really where i mean the changes happen on every screen but like if you were look at to look at a weekly chart or a, 
for a yearly chart, you couldn't tell what was really going on um, or where a turn or where a significant wick was happening uh, within that candle. It would be really hard to tell. So you have to go to a lower time frame to see it, right? So that's why I'm on the five second time frame. And again, you know, you can get clouded by the minutia. That's why you have to be looking at, um, you know, the larger time frame, we're on the five minute time frame. Now we're looking at the one minute at the bottom and we're looking at the five second at the top. So if we're here, we're looking at the one minute. This is that general area here. One of the things I noticed was that the true bottom seems to come after a flush, All right? See that flush there? See that flush, that flush, and after that flush, and, and also, right? So after that flush, we get a bearish candle with high volume. Flush, bearish candle with high volume, that should be happening relatively close to a level of support. That says uh, 48.73, if we go over to and then we're going to global position it. And it's right here. So 48.73 is right here. Well, let's draw the line first, 48.73. But I think we're talking about that first one, but that, that's not lining up. Okay. So again, I'm just global positioning on this chart. And as essentially the low is here, right? Because you still want to break the descending resistance line. You, you don't want to get in. I mean, you know, again, strategy, your strategy, somebody's strategy, invoking some, invoking some thought for you. But um, you've got a descending resistance line there. You definitely don't want to get in until it's done dropping. At whatever rate it's going to do. So, I mean, you definitely wouldn't want to get in until here anyway. Uh, some people follow the uh, this dash line, I believe is my nine EMA. I'm seeing a lot of stuff happening around this yellow line, which is 15 moving average. Um, but so, yeah, you may you may look for this flush high volume bear break of the descending trend and then get in at the cross of the 25 EMA. Plus, just for confirmation, you have that nice, um, tight consolidation zone right there. Okay. So that being the case, your number isn't 4873, right? 4873 is just, a, just where we had that, uh, that large bearish candle, right? But after we have those three things, right? And so we'll say flush, bearish, um, large volume candle trend break. And tight consolidation. And that's not really a lot of things to look for. I mean, you can be patient and wait for that. That's not really a lot of things to wait for. But say that happens and you have gotten a support line here at 4858, uh, but you're going to enter here where it crosses this yellow line at 4858, and you entered here at 4862. Now we're going to go back to the higher time frame. And we are on this candle here. Okay. So 48, 58. I think it's just that bottom of the bottom. 48, 58. Okay. And then 48, 62 is right there. Okay. So you would have uh, got in at 48, 62 right here. And then you would have looked at 48, 58 to be. Uh, your low, your lowest. But now, like I said, that's a potential entry zone. But is that supported by any significant price level or pivot to the left? And looking at this, I mean, this is an area here, but I would probably call that temporary support because this is this is this area here is just like the um, pullback range. It's not like a pivot range. It's not like it's not like a high or a low or, um, you know, and, and the low doesn't have to be 
a large move down and a large move up. It could just be a low. But uh, this just happened to be like a tweezer bottom. Could be a tweezer bottom. Could be a tweezer bottom. Could be a tweezer top. We got a tweezer top back there somewhere. But let's zoom out and see. Yeah, that's not really lining up with anything. And I think TQQQ is probably hitting some, hitting some highs too. So I don't think we're gonna find anything on the chart where that hits. Okay. And to be thorough, let's go out to the daily time frame. Uh, if I can spell, where's my D? All right, and this was TQQQ. On the daily time frame, we are playing around this level, the 48s. And so, yeah, back in 2022, it does hit in this range, but there's not a whole lot going on in here, right? I mean, this is just a consolidation zone. So not a lot going on right there. Ooh, but it does hit the bottom of this wick right in here. I mean, it really tapped into that wick there. And that's why I say, how far do you go back to the left-hand side of the screen? We want to find what the low is there. We click our left mouse button and we put it over the candle. And it says that the low there was 48.17. So now we're going to go back to the five minute time frame. Zoom out, 48.17, 48.17. 17 would be right in here. Kind of corresponds to this area but um i mean i'm i'm not going to get into the minutia of a couple cents and, and that kind of things but um yeah could be a significant area in general i don't think that's exactly what this is but um, then again i don't know all right that was wait let's see let's go 48. Okay, so the 4858. Okay, so the 4858 is this guy here. That's this one. So that's the better. Well, that that's what we're looking for, right? That's that's what we're talking about. We're talking about how to identify that. Um, talking about how to, how to identify that this is a better entry than this. Like I said, after. Uh, kind of looking through the chart a little bit. I saw those flushes. So there's the flush. There's the high volume bear. We have a tight consolidation zone. We broke the descending trend. And now we broke the uh, 20, the 15 moving average. Okay, so let's, and that's how, again, that's how we d distinguish between this low and this low. This low, I mean, and again, that flush is from the top. It's from like a peak, right? It's not just any flush. Like this is kind of moving, kind of sideways, consolidating a little bit, and then it tries to flush here. That's not the same. Um, and even if you're looking at this, if you call it that a flush, which I don't call it a flush, I call like a bunch of these dot 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 dot. I call all those flushes. Uh, and then, but then we still really don't have a large volume bear to follow it. All right, so let's go to the next one. Um, this has a little bit of a pullback and then a, a, a stronger pivot. But if we were looking at something a little bit more or a little less discernible, um, we go here. So here's a um, move to the downside, uh, hitting kind of the descending demand zone. And then this is the ultimate lowest low demand zone, right? So how do we differentiate from here to here? Same thing global positioning tap that this is our lowest low come over to the the screen that brings us to here and to here okay so here Maybe I was looking at this one being the flush. It came to the top and then it just kind of flushed down. We don't have a large volume bear there. And this isn't the lowest low. Um, this would be the lowest low. But we do have a large volume bear here. Or certainly here with a wick to the downside. 
Um, that's not the same flush like I would call. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is definitely a flush here, but it's not, I mean, it does kind of drop off. So again, I'm still figuring this out as I'm going, right? So I'm going to identify that. And then I'm gonna say that this is the large volume bear here. So now after those, now we need to break the descending trend, which this is all ascending, right? So probably need to come back to this area. Makes sense, right? There's a descending trend there. Um, or re-enter when it taps and then take the entry of the 15 of the uh, 25 EMA cross after that. Um, that looks like a potential strategy, but again, still all within this, all within the behavior of this stock here, we, we still have a flush, a large volume bear, a cross of the descending trend and a break above the 15 or the 25 EMA. The 25 EMA break, I wouldn't say, I mean, I wouldn't say that's necessarily as significant because it breaks a lot of places, but it's really only breaking on the way up, which is, you know, moving averages are a lagging indicator. So it's going to, it's going to be on the high side of the 25 EMA when it's moving up. That's what it doesn't, it doesn't forecast that it's going to move up. And that's why it's a lagging indicator. Um, but like, yeah, I mean, that's a flush. That's the large volume bear. Um, and then there's going to be a break of the, of the descending trend. Or could you zoom out? Or maybe you could zoom out and there's your flush, but now you need to do a descending trend. Maybe you make the descending trend on a larger, um, or the larger move. And so you go from the top there through the whole thing. So, all right, let's see if we can find one, one more place because like I said, it's not terribly clear, but getting some ideas here, getting some ideas. Okay, we did that one and that one. We did this one and this one. Let's do, this, this isn't really, I don't think these are really distinct. But let's see what they say. Okay. Yeah, so really, well. I mean, there, there's so, there's so little during this time of the day anyway, looks like, uh, there's so little liquidity here and there's no large, there's no large bears through here anyway. Um, there's large volume, but it's not a large bear. And then, well, I mean, it is large volume. It is a bit of a flush, but it's not really a long bear. I mean, it, it's, it's longer than the rest of them. This long bear, but it's, this is not the long volume bear right here. Well, this one is a little bit better, but the flush doesn't look the same. I mean, it's definitely a flush. It's, you know, bearish activity just shooting straight down, bearish activity sh shooting straight down, high volume. Um, these, these average range candles are a little bit longer. So uh, let's put our cursor there and see where we are here. Well, that was, that was right at the bottom. So maybe that is valid or the most valid high volume flush. This high volume is at the very bottom, um, which I, I think I do tend to see most of the time is 
like when there is a when there's a turnaround the highest volume candles are at the very bottom they're they're absorbing everything let's see if we see that high volume it's midway through but it's also um could fool you like this could potentially fool you right bit of a flush um high volume candles a little bit longer than the rest let's see where that lines up on chart that lines up to right here and that would not be a great entry but also like i said we have to break the descending trend and when we look for the next descending trend to break your brain would either say that's the descending trend or probably because it bounced a second time here and so you say okay i'll take my entry here and then it's getting over the 25 ema so i'll take it here but that would be wrong right because it keeps going down that area is right here that area is right here so it's not time yet and you would probably say well that's lining up with um you say well that's lining up with that bottom wick there so that's a good entry let's take that and go hmm all right um that better this area here which is the best entry out of that move well that definitely lines up with this gap and you kind of always need to really pay attention to this gap anyway so that's another thing to consider but this is the this is the best one Um, one of the things that I've noticed just trading recently, like intraday, looking at smaller time frames, that kind of thing too, is trading over, tra going long over the 200 EMA and looking for shorts under the 200 EMA. So even this, but this is just below the 200 EMA and over here it's when it gets above the 200 EMA. Um... So that, and we'll go back and look at the other one, but so that criteria can be, okay, well, if the, if the chart breaks the descending resistance has a flush and has a high volume long bear breaks over the 25 EMA and over the 200 EMA. All right, so let's see what it looks like on that on the other examples that we looked at. So here, I got a feeling that's under under the 200 EMA as well. That was here. This was under the 200 EMA as well. However, the break where we said might be a good entry because we have to break the because we have to break the descending resistance. The break happened here. The break happened right at the 200 EMA. And so maybe that is the entry. This is the, um, this is the setup. This is the entry. All right, let's go and see what it looks like on the, on that last one. So we did this one and then this guy here. That one looks like as far as the 200 EMA, cause that's what, that's what we'll be throwing off this strategy. Where's it at? Got it. Say, got to do that global positioning. That over here. Okay. okay. Well, maybe. Right. Maybe it obviously plays with the risk to reward, but if you're looking at the five second time frame anyway, you know, 
Again, this is the five second time frame. So if you're looking at a different time frame, the moving averages will be different. All right, but um, if we're looking at that flush and then Okay, so we have the flush, we have the large volume bear, we have the we have a nice tight consolidation down there, which is I think that's a little bit different from some of the other ones. We weren't seeing that as much. And then we have the break of the descending resistance. Now we're looking for the move over the 25 EMA, over the yellow line, over the 25 EMA. So we have that here, but we don't have the break of the 200 until here. So would you want to wait and see all this happen and then still wait? from 11.15 all the way to 11.28. Wait another 15 minutes for it to cross over the 200 EMA. Take that entry. Use this as your stop loss. I thought it looked uh, like a bad risk to reward setup, but let's see, this would be, if we took the entry there and our stop down was down here, that is about 0.29%. And then if the move up, if the height of what we could capture out of that was, well, I mean, it actually does go up quite a bit. 0.29 to that is 0.97. So 0.3 to one. So that's about a one to three. That's, that's better than one, a little, bit, a little better than one to three, which isn't bad. So like I say, even if you wait for that 200 EMA, now this is the, this is the tricky part, um, setting that stop loss, right? Because you see here, it actually did dip down and went just under that, just under that. And, um, it would have stopped you out. All right. So where to set, set that stop at? You know, I can't, uh, I can't tell you that I'm not coming up with a strategy right now. I'm just, I'm just thinking through some things and, and invoking you to think through some things. So. How do we identify this is the best one? Or are you looking for a double bottom, right? So after after all these things happens, after this happens, after one happens, two, three, break four, moves over the uh, 200 EMA five, now you wait for the retest of here. I don't know that you're always gonna get that retest, but, um, or look for that retest into this zone maybe da, 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 da. the retest into this zone and then set your stop loss just below it somewhere um or maybe that retest should be this another high volume touch let's see what the other candle look like uh so we were we were here so let's see what this one look like if we were to try to implement the same the same thing. Ah. Wait a minute. I move my move my big move my big chart. Okay, so we're checking on this guy. Okay, that takes us to here. So once all these things happen and we got our break, it never came back down to this zone, right? Or maybe the part of the criteria has to be just that it did come back to this zone at least two times. You can take it on the second time or if it's already came a second time, you're good to go. I like that. I like, I like the idea of that. Because a retest is usually a good idea. All right, so we checked that one. We checked that one. Well, we checked that one. We checked that one. Um, and then the only other one to recheck was this one, which is not as strong a trend or as aggressive a move, but we must check it anyway. So again, we're looking for looking for the flush, the break, the high volume bear, the 
Okay, so looking for the flush, the high volume bear, the break of the 25, the cross over the 200, and a retest. And this broke below. So, you know, if you were trading that other one as a strategy, you would say that this one doesn't work. I would say that this one doesn't work because what we'd have to be saying was that this was the bottom. We'd have we'd, be, we'd have to say that this was the bottom. We'd have to say that this was the first test here. This was the first test. This was the second test. This was the flush. This was the high volume bear. Um, this was the cross over the 25 EMA and then um, we broke below these and so we're invalid even though we finally crossed the 200 EMA there so this one would not this one does not compute does not compute and again I mean it's just a very slow moving uh, very slow moving move so um yeah. Okay. I think this was. I think this was pretty interesting. I've I've seen similar setups on other charts, uh, but to to see this play out like this, I think it's um. I think it's pretty interesting. So I'll be looking for this this kind of setup on other charts. Um, like I'm sp specifically looking at the spy these days, and so if I see this happen on the spy, then I will let you know. This, this is around three o'clock. High volume bear. This, I, you know, I mean, this is definitely a, a flush, which is kind of straight down, not making a lot of pullbacks. Definitely a flush, right? So this is definitely a flush. This is definitely a high volume long bear. This is definitely a test and a retest. We moved above the 25 EMA, and then here we moved above the 200 EMA. So, and then we also, obviously, we always have to cross the trend, right? All right, and so we got the cross of the trend. But that would mean entering here. And I'm zoomed way in, but I got a feeling this is not going to be a good risk to reward. Um, I think I jumped screens here. All right, so yeah, well, I don't know. Let's see. So I said the entry would be there. This line is 0.08%. If we zoomed out, well, it doesn't cross back below this level. And like I said, if we took our entry here and we draw another line from here to the height, at least at this point, it hasn't crossed back below. Um, that is a, that's 0.3% and it started as a 0.08. So 0.08 to 0.3, that again is roughly a, um, uh, one to three. So I don't know, maybe that's a decent strategy. Uh, I'm just going to jot it down because I will look for that. All right. So we have, um, tests. Retest, flush, large, volume, bear, break of descending resistance, um, break over. And actually, if it breaks over the, if it breaks over the uh, 200 EMA, it had to have already broken the 25 EMA. So I'll just put a break over 200 EMA, and then we'll just leave it at that. Okay. All right, guys. I uh, hope you got something out of this. I'm always doing this. So, you know, you, you're happy to follow along. And if you pick something up, great. Like, comment, subscribe, maybe share it with somebody. Um, if you didn't get anything out of it, then, um, you know, maybe I keep my thoughts to myself. No. Um, yes. But seriously, I, I'm, I, I just do this because this is what's going to make me better. And so, um, if you pick something up along the way and it furthers your progression, 
then share, share, share back, comment, uh, share back with the community. You know, it may not be uh, on here. It may be with another community, but um, be engaged, be engaged. That's all I ask. All right, guys, I'm Eric. I'm out. Peace.